What's going on? My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I want to welcome you to drboycetv.com, the home for intelligent black people. And uh, we are um, black first on this platform. So if you also are black first, if you believe that the black community matters more than other communities, uh, please put your hashtag V1 in the chat. Uh, hashtag V1 is our calling card. It means that uh, black people come first. And that's just the way it's always going to be on this platform. So uh, today I had um, uh, it's something I really wanted to talk about because I really think that there's a lot of lessons in this. Um, and this is not uh, coming at this issue from a gossipy perspective at all. But uh, how many of you saw what was going on with Scottie Pippen's wife? Uh, Scottie Pippen's wife, Larsa, apparently she is uh, what I might call a super thought. Uh, she is <laughs> uh, she's the ultimate groupie, apparently. And uh, she's been engaged in some crazy ass behavior that I think was worth talking about. Uh, because I, I, I think that just in generally speaking uh, about when you talk about wealth and relationships, there's a connection there that I want to elaborate. So to dig into this issue, I had to bring in my homeboy, the brother who actually introduced this topic to me, who brought this story to my attention, Jeff Lightsey Jr. Jeff Lightsey Jr. Uh, is a frequent contributor to the, the Black Boss channel. And, uh, and first of all, I want to welcome my brother. How you doing today, man? Pretty good. How are you doing, Dr. Boyce? Doing very well, man. Very well. So you you schooled me on what was going on with um, Scottie Pippen's wife, Larsa. Uh, can you kind of catch us up on what's been going on with, with her and why she suddenly, or he and she have been trending on Twitter? Yeah, so they've been trending simply because, like you said, Scottie Pippen's wife, and I referred to her as an ex-wife at first, but it's technically still his wife. His wife, Larsa, is out here flaunting and going all kinds of crazy with these very young very married NBA players and, and superstar athletes. So for those who don't know, Scottie Pippen uh, has uh, his wife, Larsa. They filed for divorce, but it, it is his wife. They have four children together, the oldest one being like 19, 20 years old. And she was recently spotted in Miami with a young man named Malik Beasley, who's 24. Larsa's 46. He's 24. And Malik Beasley is actually married to a woman named Montana Yao, right? So they were spotted in Miami holding hands uh, on what, what seems to be Malik's birthday. And so why it was such a big thing was because, like you said, Scott, uh, Lars is married, Malik's married, and, and he has a child at home. And his wife actually found out that Malik was down in Miami partying with Lars and Pippen through the Internet, right, through Twitter. She, it wasn't like he told her or whatever. Like he was actually found out her husband was cheating on her through Twitter, and it kind of threw her for a loop. Because the NBA season starts in less than 20 days, right? So this happened about four or five days ago. And she thought he was in Minnesota, which he just got a big four-year, $60 million contract from. She thought he was in Minnesota getting ready for the season. And turns out he's spending his birthday down in Miami with Larsa Pippen. And this is just the first of several incidents that involve Larsa Pippen, right? Like she, and, and it's not like me making this stuff up. Like she's on record talking about, you know, hooking up with Future. You know, the, the rapper who's who's got several baby mamas. Uh, she's on record talking about uh, hooking up with Tristan Thompson, you know, the NBA player who's been around Khloe Kardashian and all, you know, their history. And she's on record, you know, talking about flaunting and talking about being with all these different men and all these different things. And and still, at the end of the day, is able to go home to Scottie Pippen. Right. Like she's able to, you know, sit up there and defend him, sit up and go home to him. Like that's the most recent thing. So, boys, I don't know if you know this. But there's a picture floating around that Larsa Pippen is back at home with Scotty. Like she, she's coming back home. Like, like this came out today. <laughs> like so, like Scotty's currently trending on Twitter right now because Larsa Pippen showed up uh, at the doorstep of the home that he lives in. Right. So it, it is a big mess, man. And it and it and it really goes back to kind of what LeVar Ball said. And, and a lot of people had, you know, took it was pissed at him for saying that you can't find a woman though. He was telling his sons, you can't find a woman. Like I found your mom while you're playing in the NBA. Well, Scottie Pippen married Larsa Pippen while he was in the NBA. And at, on a surface level, it might've seemed fine, right? Like he, he, he married her with no prenup, but they had all these kids and everything seemed good. But then, you know, after she gets a few million followers on Instagram or the emergence of Instagram and she starts hanging out with people like future and, and, and stuff ain't the same. Right, like stuff is not the same, and that is the uh, the reality that we're living in at this point. Mm. 
Well, you know what? First of all, everybody who just came in, I'm talking to Jeff Lacey Jr. We're talking about Scottie Pippen's uh, very expensive wife. And uh, and I don't think it's a matter of really talking about somebody's relationship and gossiping uh, to that point. It's really a matter of really talking about uh, the fact that there's a link between, uh, you know, money and relationships. You know, um, it, it's hard to imagine that this woman, when you see them as a couple, I, I don't really see them as a couple that would have naturally occurred. Um, I think that having a lot of money, give me a yes or no if you agree. I think having a lot of money, money for some reason, it makes guys a lot more handsome than they would be if they didn't have any money. You know, when you start getting that money in the bank, suddenly you become the best looking man in the room. And uh, there are people who are strategic about that. There, there are people who see you as an asset. You know, when Scottie Pippen played for the Bulls, the Bulls saw him as an asset. They didn't see him as a person. He was a financial asset. So she saw him as a financial asset. She said, I, I want to invest. And again, I don't know this lady. So let me just back up a little bit before I get too presumptuous. But, you know, when, when you see this kind of uh, chaos, it almost makes me feel like this is a strategic woman, you know. And uh, and that's the thing. The, 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 one of the myths is that the groupie is stupid, that the groupie is some dumb, dizzy girl who ain't got nothing to do, you know, who just uh, is, is just going along to have a party. But uh, the groupie is is pretty much in many cases a financial scientist. You know, they like they like they really prepare for these guys so they can lock in with them, have babies with them and get a piece of that money. They know how much money they make. They know that Anthony Davis just signed that 190 million dollar contract. Like they're writing that down. You know, like like they're in a, like you're in a science lab. They got finger, you know, glasses on the nose like writing down the details of how much of this is guaranteed, girl. You know, and and I think that guys don't get that. So so you have guys who just trust a big button to smile. And next thing you know, your your family wealth, your family wealth is gone, right? And this ain't even a black woman. I don't know what she is. What what is she? Is she black? She's, black. Oh, she's, she's white probably woman. Latino or something. I have no idea. But what what what's even interesting to what you're saying, boys? Also, is that thing like look at the time that her, her and Scotty got married. They got married in 1997. What was happening in 1997? The Bulls were in the midst of winning their fifth NBA championship, right? <laughs> like like their fifth one. Right. Like, so it wasn't like she called Scotty around, you know, rookie season. Scotty, who's just finding his way in the NBA. Like we all watched the last dance. We know what was happening in 1997. Right. So <laughs> I imagine if they got married in 97, they probably met no earlier than 90. What? 93. Let's give them 93. It, 93. They were in their second championship. Right. Like like he was an NBA champ. He was a known figure. And they met where? in the city of Chicago. So like it goes to your point. It's not like Scotty Pippen was some mystery, right? Like Scotty Pippen was very well known in the city of Chicago by the year 1997. Hell, even by the year of 1993 if we give him 4 mm. years of dating, which more than likely wasn't the case. Mm. Well, and you know what's funny, man, is that people lie. Like people will lie. Like if you had asked her back in the day, if you said, "So what made you fall in love with Scotty?" She would say, "Oh, because he's so sweet." And he's such a nice guy and he's wonderful with the children, right? Like they, they, they'll, they'll give you all these like non-serious reasons why uh, they're attracted to him. Almost like they, they would have started dating him if he was wearing a Burger King uniform. <laughs> and, 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 and we know that's not the case, right? We know that that money matters, right? People pay attention yeah. to money. And here's the thing. It's not a bad thing either. It's not bad that money matters. Like I get on guys a lot. Because guys will be mad, like all oh, women, they just gold diggers. They just they just like guys that got more money. Well, actually, women are wired to uh, be attracted to financial security. Um, I, I studied that in, in extreme detail when I wrote um, I wrote a book called Financial Lovemaking. Women are attracted to financial security, and men can get mad about it, but you know that's no different from the way men might be attracted to long hair and big booties, right? It's, it, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when it's that blatant. See, there's a difference between somebody saying, yeah, it's, it, you know, I, I think you're a great person. And it also helps that you have $100 million in the bank, right? That, like, that's okay. But when a person is that blatant and you have paid such a high price for this, um, that's where I think you have to really kind of question, like, was this strategically intelligent? Meaning, so let's, let's break it down like this. Scottie Pippen, over the course of his NBA career, according to my research, has made $109 million. $109 million. And last time I checked, she she had never uh, ever put on a Bulls uniform. She had never took no jumpers in the gym. She wasn't there next to Michael Jordan when they was winning them titles. That was Scotty's work. Um, now uh, that these two still are married, uh, there from what I understand, you could correct me on this, Jeff. I, I you're the expert on this. Um, 
from what I understand, they do not have a prenup. Is that correct? No, they do not. So there's there's so there's no prenup. Uh, you're still married to this lady who's going to jack you for every piece of paper you got in your pocket and get as much money out. Because what they got? How many kids they got? What four? Four. Or four. So she doesn't have four kids. She four, got twenty and under. Twenty and under. Got, she got four anchors hooked into your financial carcass, right? You know, and, and so she's going to be paid off this. And and you almost you almost can't get mad at her except for the fact that it's almost so blatantly disrespectful from the public eye. I mean, just from a public perspective, it's like not only did you come in here and, and sink your teeth in this man and take his money, but you're publicly humiliating him exactly. because you're out here dating guys that are young enough to be your son. Like, doesn't she have a son that's almost as old as the guy she's dating now? 20 years old. He has a son that's a basketball player at Vanderbilt University. He's like 19, 20 years old. And Malik Beasley is 24 years old. So, yes. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's the part that's a little bit sad because, you know, I'm thinking about legacy, right? You know, you're Scottie Pippen. You you put in your work. You, you played your basketball. No more basketball for you. Legs are bad. Knees are bad. Um, and uh, and so all the most of your high-earning years are probably behind you. Michael yeah. Jordan is not the case. Michael Jordan, re, you know, just reinvested his assets, and now he makes more money that, now than he did as a yeah. player. I don't think Scotty's in the same situation. No. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so 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 this is all you got. So you're gonna lose a big chunk of that uh, in the divorce. Uh, she's she's gonna take she's gonna she's gonna get her money, and, but then also your legacy and your reputation, like your family. I mean, just what your son. Don't they have an 18 year old son in college? Yeah, he goes to Vanderbilt. He's a basketball player, and that and that was and that was the thing about this story with Malik Beasley is that. You know, there's been a bunch of stories with Larsa Pippen, like I said, with the future thing and the Tristan Thompson thing. And like, it's not people making this stuff up. It's her getting in front of a camera like we are talking about these things, talking about being intimate with with these men. So like that that's not like, you know, TMZ's reporting that they saw people leaving at three in the morning. It's actually her coming out of her mouth. And the son with the Malik Beasley thing, the, mo the latest thing, he actually made a statement. Right. Like he put out a tweet saying, uh. Basically, you know, I can only control what I can control. I, I can't, you know, be responsible for other people's actions. Now, obviously, he didn't say his mother's name directly, but we knew who the hell he was talking about. He's talking about his own mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause he's in the middle of a basketball season or at the start of a basketball season trying to get his game right or whatever, maybe, you know, dreams of the NBA or whatever. And he's probably got t Twitter trolls or teammates or whoever talking about what his mom is doing, what they see on the Internet. So that that's the that's the that's that's sad, man. That is super sad. Yeah, I think it's just kind of messy, you know. And by the way, everybody, um, I'm speaking with Jeff Lightsey Jr. from Ball Sports. Uh, and uh, also, if you want to follow Jeff, uh, go to the BlackBallsChannel.com. Some of you are watching on the BlackBallsChannel.com, and the BlackBallsChannel.com is a platform we created where black men control that conversation. Uh, we believe that the world doesn't listen to black men. So uh, if you uh, believe in black men and you want to hear what they have to say, or maybe you want to be a contributor, um, go subscribe at the blackbosschannel.com. It's right there on the screen. And also when you subscribe, hit the notification bell. So you'll be notified when they go live. Jeff talks about sports all day. I call him little Stephen A because he knows sports extremely well. And it was actually from watching Jeff's show that I saw the Scottie Pippen thing. And I said, man, I want to talk about this because we need, uh, you know, men have to have real conversations and women too. Have to have real conversations about relationships and and how all this ties into your overall success as a person. Like people who don't think money and relationships are deeply connected, don't understand money. They don't understand relationships. Uh, most money, most wealth in the world is accumulated through through family. Uh, and so, when, who you bring into your family has a huge impact in how you end up financially. For example, Scottie Pippen brings his lady into his life. I'm not dissing her for her choices. She has a right to, you know, she can sleep with whoever I want. I don't care. She can go, you know, uh, I guess empty out the daycare. I guess she should. Well, not, not the actual daycare, but she's going after all the young boys. That's fine. I mean, whatever, right? Uh, you know, Jada Pinkett had that little crazy thing going on. Yeah. And I think that I, I, when I saw this, I almost felt the way I did with the Jada thing is that uh, we know people are freaks, right? People, human beings like sex. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that there's a difference between, um, having your business behind closed doors and having it out in the street, you know, and and I think that the fact that she had it out in the street like that, and she's a married woman, uh, she's got children, adult children who are almost the same age as the guy she's running around with, 
And then also he has a wife. Let's not forget about that, right? Yeah. It just, you know, it just creates such a such a messy thing uh, to the point where uh, I would almost say to guys and, and women too, uh, you know, it's one thing if you uh, if you date somebody or marry somebody who's got flaws, but it's a whole nother level when you date and marry somebody whose flaws will spill over in public, right? Where now, you, you know, your friends looking at you crazy because your spouse is a damn fool. Uh, what are your thoughts on what I just said? Yeah, I mean, it, that's that makes perfect sense. Ironically, Malik Beasley's wife, like his current wife, looks like a 24-year-old version of Larsa Pippen, which is very strange. I don't know if you can pull that up, but it's like very, very strange how that works out. But like you said, yeah, spilling over in public, if you're Scottie Pippen, like like you know who you are, especially during the 90s, like you in 1997 is it particularly, like you are a star basketball player. You are in the midst of the Bulls. You are, you know, who you are. And, and if we just fast forward to like more modern, more of these times, Scotty actually filed for divorce initially in 2016 after the future thing. Because apparently, you know, she was caught messing around with future. They was button heads. She was caught messing around with future. And he actually filed for divorce. But what what probably stopped him from from following through with the divorce and getting back with his wife was the money, not having a prenup. <laughs> and, 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 and like, again, Larsa filed for divorce. So like they, they guess they want to split again. So she files for divorce in 2018. And divorce is never finalized. Now, I've never been divorced, but I can tell you, if you wanted to get divorced it, over two years, you could have make it made it happen, right? Like, if you wanted to get a divorce, like, over a two-year span going on three years, like, it could have happened. But it, it never happened. And I think mainly because, like you said, that $100 million that he made in the NBA. And what, what makes that even more interesting is that during the last dance, we all were exposed to how Scottie Pippen mismanaged his first contract. Right. Like how he was kind of screwed over by the Bulls and they didn't give him what he felt like he deserved. And he, I think he got I mean, it was it was a very crappy contract. I can't even remember what it was. It was like 15 it million, was, over like seven I years, think it was seven years, 18 million dollars, Eighteen million dollars. OK, yeah. so we all like we're like, what the hell was Scotty thinking? Like when we all watched it because nobody knew or whatever. And so what Larsa did while when that after that episode aired that night, Larsa pulled up Scotty's career earnings and tweeted it out or Instagrammed it out and was like, Scotty did okay. And that's how most people realize, like, oh, he made a hundred, over $100 million in career earnings. It's not by accident that she knows that on top of her head. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't by accident that she could pull that up. Because guess what? If this divorce is ever finalized, more than likely she is entitled to what? Half of that or half of whatever's left of that. So that's why today... <laughs> Today, we see Larsa Pippen pulling up to the house that Scottie Pippen lives in, even after she's been trending on the internet the last few days for hanging out with a 24-year-old married NBA player. Wow. He can still wow. go home to his house. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, by the way, everybody who's watching, I'm speaking with Jeff Lysey Jr. Uh, from the BlackBossChannel.com, T-H-E, the BlackBossChannel.com. That's a platform for black men where black men control the narrative there. And uh, if so if you want to hear from the perspectives of black men, or you want to contribute or anything like that, uh, go to the blackballschannel.com. Also, when you subscribe, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and also the uh, the uh, notification bell. So the notification bell is important. So you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, we have intelligent conversations for intelligent black people. So ignorant people need not apply. Uh, but if you want to enjoy intelligent conversations, hit the notification bell, subscribe button. Also, everybody, please right now hit the thumbs up button. Whatever platform you're on, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, so uh, one thing I want to I was thinking about, man, is, you know, um, a lot of times, here's one thing I've learned about marriage. Now, you and I are different in age. I can't, what, what, how old are you, man, now? Like 24? I just turned 25 last week. 25. Okay, so you, you're too old to date Scottie Pippen's wife. So you, <laughs> <laughs> you're out of her age demographic, right? <laughs> but uh, because but, I think the guy she's dating is 24, the, the, that guy with the Timberwolves. But, but here's the thing. So uh, I've learned a couple things since I was 25. And, and one thing that I noticed when I, I I didn't get married, I'm gonna get married next year. And um and, and and people keep asking, you know, do you have a prenup? Do you have a prenup? And I say, yeah, of course we do. Right? And, and she's a grown ass woman. She's got a career. She's got the assets to to protect. So she was happy to get a prenup, right? It wasn't even like like, hey, will you get a prenup? Well, you don't love me. If you get a prenup, that means you don't love me. No, it was like, yeah, what's yours is yours. What's mine's is mine. I'm not here to steal from you. I just don't don't want you to rob me. Uh, let's hope this works out in case it doesn't. Let's make sure we're, we're prepared, right? But that's that's how we handled it now, right? 
Now, if we got married a long time ago, maybe it would have been a different type of baggage. But one of the things that I, I noticed also uh, when I would observe my friends that were married is that a lot of people don't really know what marriage really is like. Like a lot of people have a fairy tale image of marriage, especially when you're young, or maybe you didn't grow up watching two parents negotiate a marriage. I watched my parents stay married for 46 years and it was some shit. I mean, it was like, you know, some stuff where I would see my dad have to stand down to my mother. She, he had to submit to her. She had to submit to him. But a lot of people, if you say, well, getting married means you have to submit to your spouse. They'll be like, I ain't submitting to nothing. I ain't submitting to nobody. Well, if that's your mindset, then you probably shouldn't do it because it ain't going to work. You have to submit to something bigger than yourself. And if you think you're the biggest thing in the room, then you'll just be unhappily divorced. With that said, um, I've noticed that there are some marriages where people get comfortable in a really uncomfortable reality where there's a lot of complications that happen, you know, things go down, you know, maybe somebody cheats and, and they give their partner an STD and they don't tell anybody because they don't want anybody saying that. Or maybe, um, you know, or maybe they just given up on each other. They hate each other's guts, you know, so they live together like brother and sister and pretend like they love each other when people are around, but then they go to their separate corners when everybody leaves. Or maybe it's a situation where, uh, and I've seen this too, where one partner, you know, the, the man don't even like women like that, right? And the wife, you know, she want to go get her a girlfriend or or maybe she want, she wants to get her a man or whatever, right? Uh, this happens. This is real. There, are, In fact, there are prominent people out here where their whole relationship is nothing but a big facade. Like, too, like the husband is gayer than a $3 bill <laughs> and the wife is, 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 is looking at you funny, licking her chops at, at every sexy man that walks by because she's a single married woman. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Has anybody ever seen? This? Give me a yes or no to chat. Single married woman, man. I thought, see, Jeff, Jeff is 25. <laughs> still, still on the fantasy stage, but there are, and I think it's important to have this conversation across generations because I think it's because people we go into shit, you know, thinking things are one way, and we get hit in the head with all these realities. But, but, but here's the thing, like, and, and I started picking up on it when I would go places, and I, you know, I, I, I was speaking, you know, in different places around the country, around the world, and sometimes I would meet a man's wife. And she would literally give me the eyes of a single woman. Like, look at me like, hey, <laughs> if you want to make something happen, we can make something happen. And you're, I'm like, but your husband's right there. And then I started, you know, thinking about it. I was like, oh, I get it. Because your husband might be trying to hit on me too. Right? <laughs> like, like y'all really got a whole, like, illusion created here. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm getting at, right? Right? So this, I'm not saying this applies to Scotty at all. But what I am saying is that um, I'd be curious to know, What's really going on in that marriage, right? Like, if your wife is out here, like, I mean, being out loud with 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 her little situations or whatever, I would be curious to to I would love to hear her side of the story too, to just know, like, because sometimes if, if women are out here just acting the damn fool, they could tell you crazy stories about their husbands that would would would, would blow you away. Uh, what what do you think about that? What do you think about everything I just said? No, yeah. So uh, it it almost feels like like. Larsa has something over Scotty's head, right? Like to continue mm -hmm. to accept, you know, her behavior. Cause it's not like it, it'd be one thing to mess around on you in private, right? Like, or, or, you know, y'all not together and you doing these things in private, but you are, you got millions of Instagram followers, right? So you you're pretty well known and you're walking through open airports, holding hands, like not just even walking together where people got to make speculations, right? Like if, if I'm just making a speculation because y'all walking next to each other, that's, you know, for me to know or for you to know and me to try to find out or whatever. But if y'all holding hands, like like you telling me what's going on. Like ain't no other grown man just holding hands with a with a friend, right? Like, like I know I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm <laughs> holding hands with somebody who is presumably my woman, right? Like so like that, you're not even giving us anything to, to, to like try to make – like you said, people try to gossip about or whatever. You you letting it be known out in the public, or you're going on interviews. Like I said, talking about your relationship you have with Future, talking about your relationship you had with Tristan Thompson or whoever, talking about these relationships you've had with these these other prominent men. Like these men aren't just like you know below the line wayside or whatever. Like Future is one of the biggest rappers in entertainment, right? Tristan Thompson is one of the most well known athletes simply because of the family that he's associated with in professional sports simply because of the Kardashians, not necessarily off his talent on the basketball court, but because of his relationship with the Kardashians. So you know how much attention the Kardashian name brings to anybody, right? So like when you do these things, 
it's it's and, and Scotty doesn't, and that's another thing. Scotty doesn't say anything, right? Because it's just technically still his wife. So to not make a statement, and even your son is making a statement. Like your your younger, your 20, 19 year old son is talking about the the antics of his mother. For you to not that's even make a statement is interesting. Let me let me just jump in and say that that's very sad. By the way. Uh, when I was 18 years old, I would not have been wanting to issue statements on behalf of my parents and their ratchet ass behavior. That would, that would, that would probably, I'll probably need a therapist for that one. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Especially yeah. when, when, when you're essentially a public figure, like what, when you're, a, when you're a division one athlete with, we you know, with dreams of being in the NBA, you're, you're a public figure too. You know, you have a blue check on your Twitter or whatever. So people know who you are simply if you just say your name. My name is Scotty Pippen Jr. Like people would instantly, you know, recognize that name, even whether you want them to or not. So yeah, that, that is what is what is taking place. And like you said, it's very sad. Yeah, man. I, I, I think it's all crazy. And I think it's, um, I think in terms of not making this like a completely ratchet conversation, you know, in terms of, um, because it's not a gossipy thing. It's really, I think, a matter of life. I think life is a great, like, learning ground. You know, in terms of looking at other people's situations and saying, okay, if I'm strategic about my life, like if I'm really trying to have something, um, you know, build something up, and uh, and then protect something, I got to think about who I choose as my wife, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like, uh, in fact, if you were to think about j just the steps, like I talk, I love to talk about wealth a lot because wealth is very important for everything else that you want to do in your life. It's it's a great key to, you know, your freedom, your happiness, all kinds of stuff. So with wealth, it's kind of like the steps are simple, right? You figure out where the money's at. You make a plan to go get it. You go acquire some wealth and then you must protect it. So that means that who you have next to you is very important because the person next to you is going to be able to help you figure out uh, what your, your plan is going to be. They're the person. They're, they're your partner in crime. They're the person who helps you in your acquisition process, right? But so if you if you're trying to acquire and the other person, if you're trying to get it and she's spending it, then you're not gonna have anything, right? Because every dollar that comes in is gonna go out the door. Yeah. I counted a couple like that one time where uh, the the wife <laughs> the wife spent five years paying off the family paying off the family credit card. It's like ten thousand dollars, and she spent five years. She was a bus driver. She spent five years paying off this credit card, and right behind her back, her husband took the money that she had saved up to pay out the credit card and he like put it in to like his like rap music career or something crazy it was something crazy like he lost oh, all the money and oh, so she was pissed because you like everything i'm doing you're reversing everything i'm doing right so so you gotta you know so you talk about that acquisition process having somebody that that will help you build is really important as opposed to getting another dependent right i'm mean, sure you can get that cute little girl sitting next to you who's gonna look fly on your arm but if she becomes like another dependent, then you pretty much have just like another child. You're really paying child support at that point, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's yeah, no, yeah. And and then God forbid you get a divorce, because then at that point, uh, you know, I don't know how much money Larsa Pippen had before they got married. I doubt if she had a hundred million dollars, right? So now when you get a divorce, she gonna take half of you with her, you know. And and I think that and then that last the last piece of wealth is actually after you acquire your wealth, you gotta protect it. And protecting it goes deeper than just like, okay, what mutual fund am I going to put my money in? You know, do I get a will or a trust or, you know, how do I set up my insurance and my estate plans? No, it, it could be as simple as who the hell do you allow, allow around you, right? You allow the wrong people around you and you got a lot of money. You are a sitting duck. Like, like people that have money, like, first of all, they get sued a whole lot more than people that don't have money. Lawyers don't sue broke people. Lawyers do not, like if you used to go to a lawyer and say, I want to sue the bastard, they're going to be like, well, how much money they got? Well, he ain't got no money, but well, then they're going to be like, no, then it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but if somebody's got money, they're like, oh yeah, put him in the lawsuit anyway. Maybe he'll pay us just to go away. So people that got money, they get sued. People that have money, they get robbed. How many times have you, give me a yes or no in the chat, everybody. How many times have you heard about play, about NBA players and rappers getting robbed at gunpoint? And it'll be something crazy. It'll be like, like he got, you know, three men stopped him at gunpoint and they took, you know, uh, uh, you know, twenty five gold chains and eighty five thousand dollars in cash. It'll be some old ri ridiculous stuff. But that's because when you get money, you become a target, and then you you can become a target of women. Like not not good women. Good women don't come after you for your money. It's the it's the strategic strategizing, conniving. You know, wolves in freaks clothing. Right? They're like, okay, I can get him with a big button, a smile. I can get up close to him, and I can take him for everything. Yeah, and it might it might come in the form of child support. Uh, you know, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna have his baby. That's an easy one. It might come in the form of pretending like I love you, so you buy me Gucci bags or whatever. It might come in the form of a, a fake rape rape accusation. There have been guys who were falsely accused of sexual assault. 
uh, where somebody's like, look, I'm a woman. They'll believe me. They, I don't need no evidence. Uh, so, so you write me that check for a hundred grand, and I'll drop the, I'll drop the charges. If you oh. don't, then I'm going to take it all the way. Gloria Allred, actually, who loves to make money off of like wealthy black men, she loves to do. It. Every time a, a woman goes to her and says, "I want to make an accusation against the guy," and there's no evidence, but they're like, "I just want to accuse him in public because he's famous." First thing she says is, "We need you to write a check." You know, you, you have these victims and we need you to put money in a fund, you know, so that your victims can be made whole. And and, and she ain't even she knows she doesn't even have to prove that they were really victims, right? So what I'm saying is that that anybody in here, male or female, just know when you get a little something, something, you gotta be careful about being around people that ain't got nothing to lose, right? That's why you see a lot when people get a little bit of money, they like to be around other people that got something because then I could tell you that I got a new car without you getting jealous and and thinking, well, why ain't I got a car like that? <laughs> you know, like or yeah. whatever. Or or how can I get a piece of that? Right? People that have their own are the best people to be with if you have your own too. And then that way, since everybody's worried about protecting what they got, they're not going to be coming after yours as, as readily. So I think Scotty's going to get ate up. I think that this divorce. You're right. I think he's not divorcing her because it's cheaper to keep her. And when they when it finally happens, and I think she's going to be the one to file. When it finally goes down, she will walk away the victor. And I checked out this lady's Instagram. She is not a stupid lady. She might be. A, she might be. She might be the biggest hoe uh, in, in, the, in the history of hoes, right? She she's a super groupie, right? Yeah. But she is not a dumb lady, and she's gonna walk away probably with more wealth than Scottie Pippen has. And she and like I said, she ain't never put on a Chicago Bulls uniform not once, but yet will have more money than Scottie Pippen. How do you do that? Yeah, it's, it's 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 crazy to think about. It is. Um, it, I mean, it, it's just it's a plan that's been in motion. It sounds like since 1997, at the at the very least, right? Like it, it's taken 20, 20 some odd years, but it, it's gotten you this far, right? Like like would Larsa Pippen have you know millions of Instagram followers if her last name wasn't Pippen, right? Like would Larsa Pippen be in the same room as a future or Tristan Thompson or be able to meet a guy like a Malik Beasley if her last name wasn't Pippen, right? So it's been in motion and maybe she was in love, like, right? Like maybe at one point she was in love with Scotty, right? But whatever it was, it wasn't something that was strong enough to keep her from creeping and for him to foul But in back in 2016. But then he, he canceled it because, like you said, it's probably cheaper to keep her. And then she filed because he he's keeping her around. What, what it sounds like just from listening to her talk, he was keeping her around because he don't want a divorce because he's, he's going to cost them millions, whatever. So so to 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 subtract that, because you, you really disgusted it with, with what she's doing and what's going on, you just stay away. Right. Like you, you go, you busy yourself with work. You, you might move somewhere and she may say she's based in L.A. You might move to back to Chicago or something like, you know, like just be be away from home. Right. Technically. So. So what happened was she ended up filing in 2018 just, uh, because of loneliness. Right. But the divorce was has never been finalized simply because, like you said, it's definitely cheaper to keep her, especially when she knows <laughs> your career earnings. And she let it be known during the last dance. Your career earnings were over a hundred million dollars. Yep. Oh, and it's funny how she had such an accurate accounting of exactly what his net worth was. Because a few years ago, Scottie Pippen got accused of being bankrupt, and they wrote a story about it. I don't know if you remember that, and it wasn't true. And uh, I think his wife, uh, like you mentioned there, like she was also one of the people that went out. Oh, you, you. I think you kind of you did allude to that, didn't you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Where she went out and basically said, "No, here's his net worth." Uh, the fact that she's so keenly aware of exactly what the net worth is means that she has a very strong financial consciousness. That's that's my terminology for that. Financial consciousness is where you know where the money's at. You know how much money you got, right? A lot of people don't have financial consciousness. That's why they don't know how to get any money because they don't know where the money is. They don't know how to keep it. They don't keep up with what they have. She's very financially conscious. Well, well, what I will say, boys, I hate to cut you off, but she said in the interview that she was the accountant for the family, right? Like, so Scotty was still hooping. He took care of all the bills. She knew, uh, you know, Scotty didn't even know what bank he, like, these were her words. She said, Scotty didn't even know what bank he used, right? Like, she took care of all the bills. She took care of all the finances. So she has an exact account of what Scotty has, 
right? Like, so that's probably that might be. It took me to say it out loud to be that might be the nugget that's that's hanging dangling over his head. It's like because she knew she knows all the finances, like she took care of it. I mean, I don't know if she still does now, but at for the duration of his NBA career and probably up until at least 2016, right? Like she knew every penny that went into his account and that they, they came out of his account. So that that's another thing I, I forgot to mention. So she's not just a groupie. She's an accountant. <laughs> the groupie, an accountant and a scientist. Gas. G-A-S. The groupie accountant scientist. Uh, and and I, 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 you know, I'm not surprised by that. And, and here's, here's one thing that's interesting. And by the way, before I forget, let me tell everybody, I'm talking to Jeff Lysey Jr. Uh, from the Black Boss Channel. You can go to theblackbosschannel.com. That's a platform for black men where black men speak on, on issues that matter to us. Uh, if you, you should subscribe, though. If you want to hear what black men have to say, go to theblackbosschannel.com. Uh, if you're on the channel, uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up button right now. Please hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell. It's very important so you'll be notified when we go live. And you can also follow Jeff on uh, all social media platforms at jlightc7. So if you're on Instagram, uh, you know, follow him on the gram <coughs> at jlightc7. Um, let me let me let me make this uh, last point on this, Jeff. Um, I, you know, in, in terms of um, of, of, of this, you know, with Larsa Pippen and, and Scotty and their whole situation. Here's the thing, you know, I, I, I'm compelled, I guess, because I'm a man, I have a bias. My bias <clears throat> is to, to feel like Scotty got played, right? To feel like yeah. Scotty was, you know, that, that she's she's the puppet master. He's kind of been the puppet. Um, but <clears throat> but truth is that that would be an incorrect type of bias, I believe. Not, not, not only because I don't know their whole situation, but also because Scotty's a grown ass man. He made choices, just like when he signed that with crazy 18 million yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, he did it he did it for for certain reasons he said I, I just wanted my family to have security i'm gonna make a couple million a year guaranteed um you know a lot of people won't get mad at that right two million dollars a year whatever that number was or a little more than two million a year back in 1991 92 was pretty good money very good money right it's it, today it's good money right so nobody's gonna feel sorry for a millionaire in that context now the thing about it is also with larsa pippen um, as much as I, I'm compelled to be sad and almost, you know, disgusted by her behavior, um, the reality is that we can't make that, and you said this, we can't make that assumption that she was always plotting and scheming all along, right? Uh, I see her more so as a person who might have really been in love with Scotty, really wanted to build a family, really loved her kids. Um, she's also loved sex with young guys, right? That's There's a lot of women, that, I mean, Jada, Jada Pinkett jumped out there and you know, kind of open the bag on some of that too, right? Yeah. But then also, um, she's a person that is very much uh, not just financially conscious, but as a result of that, very connected to her own security. She's very, you know, and, and, and there are a lot of women like that. There are a lot of women who care deeply about their financial security. They'll say, I love you, but I also want to pay the bills. I love you, but I also want to know that I'm going to be good financially. I love you, but I don't want to fall down in case you decide to walk away. So, um, I, I don't really think that she's necessarily uh, the demon that she might be made out to be. But I do think that the one thing that really kind of uh, just kind of burns me up is when you got kids and you're doing all your stuff out in public. Yeah. I think that that's the part that probably gets me the most, because if I were one of those kids, I'd be really sad to see my mama in these crazy situations. Um, if I were Scotty, <laughs> then I, I, I guess I'd be sad. But then again, we don't know. Maybe, maybe Scotty has his own stuff going on. Um, and if I were her, I would, I think I'd, I'd be asking her, like, why are you, why are y'all even doing this marriage thing anymore? Like, I, I just, that part I don't understand. So I'll let you get the last word on it, Jeff. Well, what, what are your thoughts? No, yeah, definitely. Like you said, it's the, it's the fact that everything is out in public is what's the most embarrassing. Like it, you're embarrassing the, the, the kids more than anything. Uh, you're embarrassing the, the family name, right? Like, so if you're a Pippin anywhere in Arkansas or, in Chicago or wherever the Pippins might be, like you can like, dang, like you related to Scotty, like Larsa, like all the stuff, because it, like I said, it's being played at so public. Like it's not like it's private. It's not, and, and, and when you're in the age of social media and the age of Twitter and Instagram, and, and that's how Larsa makes her income is through social media. Like she's everywhere, right? Like just like the Kardashians or whoever, like that, they're everywhere. And so when you, when you play this out, you embarrass a family name. Not just it just it, it, it's Scotty, it's the kids, and anybody who has the last name Pippin essentially that's related to that family. You're embarrassing the family name, and it's just it's not a it's not a good look. And like you said, you just have to be careful who you who you lay down with and who you choose as a partner. 
There you go. There you go. So if we were to walk away with the moral of the story, uh, this is going to come from Uncle Boyce and Dr. Boyce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they both collaborated on this 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 lesson. If you are uh, Larsa Pippen, uh, congratulations on being strategic about your relationships, but um, but 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 don't embarrass your kids and the family in the process. Put your, keep your dirt to yourself. Um, get, you also get chat. You know, remember future. If you mess with future, just don't forget that this guy has six kids with six babies, mama. So okay. you might want to stop by and get a, get tested for some of those STDs. Um, because I'm sorry, ain't no person in the world. This is keeping one hundred. There's no person in the world with six kids and six babies, mamas, who can convince me that they even know what a condom is. Like seriously, like, like I'm sorry, like that's that's that's. No, I mean, I know that that's a little bit of a deviation from our core discussion <laughs> or just in terms of real life, like real life, like really, you know. Because somebody asked me, they said, "Well, if you were Russell Simmons, with well, Russell, um, uh, you know, the um, football, the, the quarterback, see, Russell Wilson, Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson, thank you. I was gonna say Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're Russell Wilson, would you have married Sierra? Um, no, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I think that uh, Sierra seems like a nice lady. And I think Russell uh, Wilson is a smart guy and he's a great athlete and they have a great family, a beautiful family. But I will be deeply concerned. You know, I'm sorry. You, you know, when you go and, and you've been putting your body parts in, in what I see is almost like a toxic waste dump, you know, like you, the same thing with men. Like, like, seriously, like ladies, you know, if, if you got a man that's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I was raw dogging a couple strippers last week. You got to process like what that might mean for you. You know, seriously, everybody's talking about coronavirus. Well, there's a lot of stuff. Go to Atlanta, and they got stuff out there that will put the coronavirus to shame, okay? <laughs> so, so, people, so you have to think about, you know, what you do with your own life and where what other people are bringing into your life. That's what I'm saying, right? And, and I didn't mean to get too raw with that, but I have to be honest with that. Um, but, but with that said, you know, um, so, so if I'm Scotty Pippen, I would look back at my decisions and say, you know, have I been strategic in my life? Did I protect what I have? How did I end up in this situation? Um, I think with the kids, I think those kids need to get some therapy because um, unfortunately there's a, a, a there's a bright side and a dark side to growing up in a wealthy, famous family, right? The bright side is that you get to do all these great things other kids don't get to do. But on the darker side, you've got your parents out here throwing their you know crazy stuff out on social media and you got to deal with that. And I don't and I don't think that's mentally healthy for, for young people. Like I feel really sorry for Will and Jada's kids, you know. Um, and I, I and I think that social media might create a space where we are so used to being open and we create we're living in this new world where everybody's just talking about their personal business that sometimes we forget about the kids. You know, even I even I have. I mean, I've had to stop myself and say, wait a minute, I got other people in my family that are gonna be affected by the situations I'm in, the conversations I have, who I talk to, uh, or what, what I say. So it's, it's actually caused me to calibrate certain things in terms of trying to at least say, okay, how do I at least make sure that all of that's good over here before I start getting too carried away with what's over there, right? So, uh, so I want to say thank you, Jeff, uh, for your That's time. Right. It was great to see you. It was great to see you too, Dr. Boyce. I appreciate it as always. Yeah, for sure. So everybody follow Jeff. Everybody follow Jeff on Instagram uh, and Twitter. Uh, at JLightsy7. He also has a YouTube channel. What's your what's your personal YouTube channel? It's just Jeff Lightsy Jr. It's just Jeff oh, Lightsy Jr. Jeff Lightsy. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Lightsy Jr. So if you are smart and you and especially if you like sports, uh Jeff is uh one of the best sports analysts I've ever seen. And uh he's very devoted to what he does. He's extremely good at it. Um and so uh go check it out. And he's been like that since he was like a kid. Like his mom tells me he he, he used to recite sports statistics as a kid and stuff. Uh, and also, if you just care about what black men have to say, or if you are a black man, or if you're a black woman who loves black men and want to hear our perspective on things, uh, subscribe to the Black Boss Channel, T-H-E, theblackbosschannel.com. The URL is right there on the screen. Uh, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we go live. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Love you. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, please have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Peace. All right.